When you're ready to create your construction drawings, one of the convenient tools that Chief Architect has provided is your Auto Story Pull Dimensions. Auto Story Pull Dimensions generates elevation markers and dimensions that locate walls and other objects in cross-section or elevation views. These will generate according to the Auto Story Pull Dimension Defaults dialog. We'll start here by creating a cross-section or elevation view using our cross-section elevation camera. I'll place the camera here out in front of the building, click and drag straight towards the building, and release. Once you've created your elevation view, you can generate auto story pulled dimensions by going to the CAD drop down menu, automatic dimensions, and do auto story pulled dimensions. Chief will automatically generate the elevation markers and the dimension lines according to the default setup for your auto story pulled dimensions. As you can see here, the story pull dimensions are all on the left hand side and there's two dimension lines between each of the elevation markers. You can change the default for your story pull dimensions by going up to the edit drop down menu, down to default settings. We'll move this over a little bit so that we can see the changes as we make them. We'll go to the auto story pull dimensions and then to the edit button. In the dimension defaults, you can see that these dimensions are placed only on the left. You have the option to place them on the left and the right, or just the right. You'll notice here when I click on dimensions on the right, that the reach changed from 100% to 50%. If the dimensions are only on one side, this 100% means that these dimension lines will find all of the objects all the way across the building 100%. If we put them on both sides, the dimension extensions will reach only to halfway across the building. For demonstrating the reach option in the defaults, here I have changed some of the story pull dimension defaults and regenerated the dimensions. We will discuss those settings later in this video, but for now you'll notice that the dimension line is reaching all the way across to this ridge over here. If I want my dimensions to only reach perhaps these ridges without this one, you can change the reach. We'll go back to the defaults by going to the default button, go to the dimension defaults and to auto story pull dimensions. We'll change the reach here to reach only this ridge. That's about a third of the way across the entire building. So we'll call this 33%. We'll keep the dimensions only on the left. I'll go ahead and click OK and done and regenerate. You'll notice now that that dimension line is only going to these ridges and it's not reaching all the way across to this one. You also have the options to put dimensions across the top and dimensions across the bottom at the same time you generate your auto story pole dimensions. That will place dimension lines across the top of the building and across the bottom of the building according to defaults that are found under locate objects. Here the only thing that's marked is the wall surfaces so our dimension lines are just going to walls that are within the house. If I were to select the openings, the windows and doors, then you'll notice that I have dimensions that go to each one of the windows. Not only that, my elevation markers are also going to all of the window and door tops and bottoms. Right now we have the options for the inner dimensions and the dimensions between elevation markers both marked. Dimensions between the elevation markers are these dimension lines you have the option to create two of them for two different formats. If I go to Inner Format, you'll notice that this is set up for the units to be feet and inches. You have the option to set them up for just inches or just feet. You can use decimal places or fractions. You also have the option to use metrics. If we go to the Outer Format, you'll notice that this is set up for just inches. So each of these dimension lines has a different format. Back on that general panel, if you don't want those dimension lines, simply uncheck these two boxes. You also have a format for the markers. You'll notice that the dimension numbers underneath the markers are set for decimal feet. Here under marker format, you can change it to something different, like feet and inches. With your auto story pull dimensions, you determine which elevations will be located in your dimension lines and your elevation markers. Right now it's set for the grade level, 
header heights, highest ridge height, top of the garage slab, top of additional slabs, and the top of finished floor. If you uncheck this box, it'll no longer locate that object. You can add objects. For instance, I could add markers for the ceiling finish or floor finish. Now we'll take a look at the grade level. The grade level is an option that you set here. I'll go ahead and click OK and click on Done. And then we'll regenerate our auto story pool dimensions. You can now see that I have dimensions on both sides and I no longer have the dimensions between the elevation markers and the inner dimensions. And you'll notice here that the grade level is set exactly at the first floor top of subfloor. I have the option to change that. When you generate auto story pole dimensions, the dimensions are not able to locate your terrain. Because if you have a sloped terrain, you're going to have an infinite number of possibilities for the height of the terrain as it goes around the building. You'll need to set your own grade level. So we'll go up here to the default settings button. We'll go to dimensions to auto story pole dimensions and we'll make a change under locate elevations. We'll set the grade level marker to 62 inches below the first floor level. So this number will be a negative 62. You also have the option to set the elevation reference. In other words, set zero in your elevation markers. I'll go ahead and click OK and click on Done. Generate my auto story pole dimensions again. And you'll notice that the grade level that I've set is marked at zero. Then all of the other numbers on the elevation markers are relative to that number. I want my first floor subfloor to be zero and then set the grade level relative to that. So we'll go back to the dimension defaults and under locate elevations we'll make the first floor subfloor the elevation reference or zero. Now you'll notice here that we have the highest ridge marked but I want to mark all of my ridges. So again we'll go back to the defaults and you'll notice here that we have highest ridge but we also have ridge here. I'll select this one, go ahead and add it. I'll leave the highest ridge here and then click OK. Done and regenerate. So it's marked this ridge and the highest ridge and this ridge here, but it didn't mark this one or this one. I want to mark all of them. We'll go back to the defaults and I'll remove the highest ridge but another setting that I need to pay attention to is under the general panel. Here I have the primary ridge marks only. I'll uncheck this box, click OK and done and then regenerate. Now it'll mark all of my ridges. Once you've created auto story pole dimensions, you can edit them. For instance, if I select this dimension line, you'll notice that I have diamond edit handles at the end of each one of these extensions. I've got the highest ridge marked on this side. I don't want to repeat the information, so I can remove this extension by simply selecting the diamond edit handle and dragging it away from other objects on the plan. You can also add extension lines. For instance, I need a header marker at the top of this window. I've clicked on the extension line, so I'm getting the extension line edit handles. The extension line edit handles will allow you to shorten or lengthen the extension lines, but they won't allow you to remove them or add them. If I click on the numbers for the dimension line, I'll get my diamond shaped edit handles. These will allow me to add or remove. Once you've selected the number, you'll see the move edit handle for the dimension line. That will move the entire line. And right next to that, you'll see the diamond edit handle that will allow you to add an extension. I'll select this diamond edit handle and drag it right to the top of this window. Now it didn't mark this dimension as a header, so I can select this dimension line, click right on the number, and use my Open Object tool to open up the Dimension Specification dialog. You'll notice the number next to each one of these extensions, 9, 8, 7, 6. These are your extension numbers. I want to change this one that's number 6, so I'll go to Extension Markers, click on the drop down here that show all of my extension numbers, and select number 6. Here I can add elevation marker text, so I'll type in header. When I click OK, you can see that's added that dimension. 
Now I'll extend this one so that it aligns with the rest of the elevation markers. It also added a dimension line between these two extensions. So I'll select that dimension line, use my Open Object tool, go to Segments, and this is the segment between 6 and 5. So we'll click on the drop down, find that segment, and select Blank Segment. That will remove the dimension between them. I'll go ahead and make one more change so that we can demonstrate how to change the text style for the dimension lines and for the elevation markers. We'll go back to the defaults, back to dimensions, and we'll add dimensions between the elevation markers. Go ahead and click OK and done. Regenerate. Now we'll take a look. The text and arrowheads on these dimensions are following the active dimension defaults. We'll go back up here to the defaults, go to dimensions, and go to this first dimension default setting. Right now, the 1 quarter inch dimension defaults is the active dimension defaults. I'll click on the edit button here and go to the arrow. You'll notice that that is the arrow that these dimension lines are using. Let's change the arrow and let's change the text style that it's using. Right now it's using a saved text style called 1 quarter inch text style. We have all of these options and you can create your own. If I click on the define button, that'll open up the saved text styles dialog. I'll copy this one and we'll call this 1 quarter inch Arial Textile. That'll open up this textile's defaults. I'll select the Arial text here, change the number height to 4 inches, and click OK. And click OK here. Then we'll regenerate those dimensions. I'll use my Zoom Area tool and we can zoom in a little bit closer. You can see now that the text and the arrowheads are following the active dimension defaults. However, that did not change the elevation marker text. This text is controlled by the layer that your auto story pole dimensions are set on. If I select this dimension line and look down here at my status bar, this is your feedback. When you've selected an object, it'll tell you what that object is, a dimension line, and it'll tell you what layer that object is on. The dimensions automatic is the layer it's on. So let's go up here and display our active layer display. That will open up the active layer display options here on the right side of your screen. I have that dimension line selected, so it's isolating the dimensions automatic layer. I can change the text that's assigned to this layer here at the bottom. Right now it's using text style, default text style. I'll click on define and again that'll open up my saved textiles. The text this layer is using is the default textile. I'll go ahead and copy that one and create a new one. We'll call this 1 quarter inch Arial Black. Click OK. Click on the drop down to select the font I want to use. I'll select Arial Black. I want to use uppercase here and again we'll change the height to 4 inches. And you'll notice immediately, because the layer is determining this textile, the textile and height has changed on my dimension line. As with most of the automatic tools in Chief Architect, the auto story pole dimensions can be customized to suit your needs by setting up the defaults. Defaults are saved in each plan file, so you can set them up and then save them in your template file to be used for each new project. You can also edit the story pole dimensions after you've created them for the specific needs of individual projects. You can learn more about default settings and using templates in additional online training videos.